Hey guys, do you know what happens every four years? No. College graduations? No. Leap year? No. Oh, the Summer Olympics. No. Winter Olympics. No. <sighs> Many hours later. We got it. Yep. Yeah. Every four years is when I take a shower. <laughs> you only take a shower every four years? That's disgusting. Uh, um, no, well, it... no, Gus. I was talking about inauguration day. <gasps> and what? Gus, that's gross. Yeah. Oh. Does it smell like? <laughs> does it smell like old potatoes? <laughs> that's my shampoo. <laughs> Every four years in November, the United States has its presidential election. The following January, whoever won the election is sworn in as president. And this is called the inauguration. The inauguration happens on January 20th in Washington, D.C. But the day will be changed to January 21st if January 20th happens to fall on a Sunday. Inauguration Day is the day the person voted in to be the president or the president-elect officially becomes president of the United States of America. George Washington's first inauguration happened on April 30th in 1789. It took place on the balcony of Federal Hall in New York City. But it was actually George Washington's second inauguration, which made March 4th, 1793 as the official inauguration date. This time it was held in the Senate Chamber of Congress Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But in 1932, Congress realized that waiting all the way from November all the way until March 4th was way too long to wait for the inauguration to take place. It was actually President Franklin D. Roosevelt's first inauguration that proved this. You see, President Roosevelt was elected during the Great Depression, and there were a lot of problems and challenges that needed to be worked on immediately. So waiting so long between the election and the inauguration was not going to work. Because of this, the 20th Amendment was added to the Constitution. And this amendment changed the beginning as well as the end date of a president's term in office. The new inauguration date was changed to January 20th. And the inauguration day opens with a prayer service attended by the president-elect. And the president-elect is the person who just won the election that took place earlier in November. They then go to the White House to meet with the current president. And afterward, the president and the president-elect, along with the vice president, and the vice president-elect moved to the United States Capitol for the swearing-in ceremonies to begin. Around lunchtime or noon, the president-elect takes what is called the oath of office. They repeat the words spoken first by the chief justice. The oath of office happens on the steps of the U.S. Capitol building. And the new president says the words, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The president must say this to become president. This is the only part of the inauguration that has been written into the United States Constitution. After both the president and vice president are sworn into office, the new president gives a speech called the inaugural address. This speech usually talks about the new president goals. Like, is it like a New Year's resolution goal? I don't know. That's probably more for like the country, right? 
Yeah, okay, cool. At cool. least we know. Yeah. Ow! <laughs> You're actually right, Gus. The goals are for the country. And then after this, the new president, vice president, and others have the inaugural luncheon. And this happens in the Capitol. This is then followed by the inaugural parade. And the president and vice president lead the parade as they are driven to the White House. They lead the parade of ceremonial military groups, marching bands, and floats. And sometimes the president will walk for a part of the parade. Once the president and vice president arrive to the White House, they watch the remainder of the parade. I know why. Why? Because they're waiting to see Santa. <laughs> Gus, wrong parade. Oh. Hmm. The day ends with inaugural parties that celebrate the new president and the new vice president. Since 1933, only three presidents have had their inaugural ceremonies changed to January 21st. Dwight Eisenhower, Ronald Reagan, and Barack Obama. George Washington gave the shortest speech ever by a president during his second inaugural address. It was only 135 words. Whoa. Wanna hear something crazy? Sure. The longest was 8,445 words. It was given by William Henry Harrison, and he decided to speak without a hat or coat during freezing weather. Didn't he get sick? Sick? He caught a cold and died just a month later. Now I know why your mom and dad always tell you to put a coat and hat on when it's cold. Hey, guess what? The first inauguration that was aired on radio was in 1925 by Calvin Coolidge. And it was the first to be aired nationally on the radio for all of America to hear. Franklin D. Roosevelt's second inauguration in 1937 was the rainiest inauguration ever. Two inches of rain poured down all day. Then, in 1949, President Harry S. Truman was the first to have his inaugural address shown on TV. Well, hey, guess what? Now, we all know about the inauguration day. And, <laughs> sadly, when I take a shower... <laughs> you still see. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Bye. Bye. Shower. Hmm. Oh.